from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight we have a couple of great groups on with us tonight. I'm going to start with Larry Morgan. Larry is the founder, one of the founders, and uh, the president of Students for America's Future, also known as SAFPAC. Larry, welcome to the show. Thank you, Monica, for Nice to have you here. Yes. Now, Larry, you, um, you have been to Metro East before. I remember, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago, you were one of our basketball announcers. Correct. When we started basketball coverage. So you've got a little, you, you've been on camera before. You know how that all works. A couple of times. But you, uh, you also, I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to just talk about you for a minute before I start talking about SAFPAC, because you kind of have an interesting background. Um, you were the president at Mount Hood Community College. Correct. correct? And you're the first African American to be elected to that position. Correct. As well as one of the youngest. The youngest, yes. The youngest, which is quite a, quite a big deal. I yeah. remember reading about you in the paper before I ever met you uh, when that happened. So that's a, that's a great start right there. But then also you have, um, tell me about what else, you, you're now a student at Wheaton College? Wheaton College, in correct, Illinois. in Illinois. Yes, and what are you studying there? Uh, majoring in American history, ah, so the okay. focus there and the minor in communications. Okay, good. Now you've also have some uh, background working with politics and political candidates. Correct. Okay, tell me a little bit about that. So uh, the past few years I was able to work with um, uh, then Senator Barack Obama's presidential campaign and uh, that worked out pretty well at, yeah. at the time. <laughs> um, but I was also uh, tapped right after I was elected uh, student body president to work with uh, uh, the governor Kitzhopper's on his transition team. I was the only student in the state to be able to do wow. that. So I got to work on the yeah the the, the uh, post secondary education budget. We got to work on a lot of uh, financing for for you know college students and things like that. Um, and was able to kind of brush shoulders with some of the uh, premier people in the state on public policy. Wow. Um, and then from there, you know, I worked uh, on a couple more campaigns. And then I was just uh, the most recent uh, uh, campaign manager for Scott Hansen for state senate nice. locally here. So. Wonderful. So how did you get into that? What, what prompted you to get into working in the, in the public sector, working uh, with people that are running for public office and, uh, and the whole political machine? What yeah, well, started that? I, you know, I just always wanted to be something uh, different and try to you know, get in there and get involved. And so they say all politics is local. And so I met with uh, Mayor Kite and kind of thought, you know, how can I get involved? And then I decided to run for student body president. And um, then the governor attended uh, a couple of rallies at our school. And we almost had the strike, which we prevented uh, at right. Community College. And right, we're right. active involved in that. And so it's just kind of progressed one after another. And uh, this past summer, I just got back from Israel um, on an international advocacy wow. mission with uh, a couple of organizations as well. So it's, it's just kind of come full circle. So what do you intend to do with all this? Um, I'd love to come back here eventually to the Northwest and kind of be that change you wish to see in the world. So if that's, you know, being a teacher or that's working locally with some political officials or just empowering people to find their voice and, and to make the change that would be good for the future, but also for this community. Which brings us to SAFPAC, Students for America's Future. You were one of the founders of this organization. Correct. Tell me uh, a little bit about what the mission is and okay. uh, what the purpose is of this organization. So the mission is in, is in two parts. The first part is the advocacy. So um, we see a lot of things as college students, you know, recent graduates, 50% unemployment, mm -hmm. youth unemployment mm -hmm. is about 16%. And so we want to find a way where we can get students, but also people who are conscientious of the future, um, empowered in politics. So that's the advocacy part. And the second part is working with local candidates and working with candidates, um, promote candidates who are, uh, again, conscientious of the future so we can get them elected and kind of see that change that's really important for America's future. How do you go about um, encouraging students, kids, to, to actually get involved? Because a lot, I, when I was a teenager, you know, I don't think my mind was very much on politics. It, that didn't come till later. And, and I know there was the bus project, which, you know, I think was a great, is a great uh, Sorry, organization yeah. for getting people involved. But how do you go about getting, getting kids and getting students uh, 
interested in that? Well, I think the first part is education, um, seeing the difference between being political and seeing the difference between politics. And mm. so what we've done is we've just made it simple, uh, common sense. It's not about an R or a D or an I. It's really about the issues um, and finding that common ground and finding the interest that people have for it. And that's one of those things where it strikes a chord across all party lines. And so that's been the first part. And the other part is um, letting people know that they have a story. Um, mm. Letting know that they, they fit into this big piece and finding where they fit in. Some people have interests, you know, in, in policy, but some people just have interests in the future, and some people have interests in, in minor details. And just finding where they fit into that whole continuum is kind of what we try to do. So if somebody were interested in, in getting involved in the whole process, making a difference, what, what, what's your advice to them as far as how, how to get started? Yeah, I, I mean, again, all politics is local, and so what I've been able to do is work with Mount Community College and their student government. Mm -hmm. And so we got um, some people, uh, in, uh, in Rockwood who had you know, not really been involved in politics, hadn't been mm -hmm. ed ever registered to vote, and we, we saw that they fit in and they had, they had a place at the table. And so um, there, there's local aspects. You had mentioned the bus project, that's another mm -hmm. big thing. Um, and so what we're doing at SAPEX, we're trying to find that avenue and, and create that forum for people to kind of rally together. And this is not uh, associated with any party, nope, any political party. Nonpartisan, unconnected PAC. I was reading something about it, and it talked about ultra partisanship. What do you mean by ultra partisan? Uh, partisan? Instead of nonpartisan, it's ultra partisan. So what is, what is the difference there? Well, I, I think we've seen um, deeply um, ensconced or entrenched political ideologies. You know, Tea Party or No Party or Her Party or, <laughs> or what have you, and so. You know, we, we see there's a deep divide, um, but if you read most studies, um, both political ideologies are only separated on, on a few issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to throw out a lot of those issues, but we're going to focus on the things we actually can change. Um, somebody once told me the main thing is that the main thing always remains the main thing. And so we <laughs> want to just focus. keep the focus there on issues that we can have control right. over and issues that we actually feel that we can change. What kinds of issues have you personally worked on or what kinds of issues are you personally currently involved yeah, in? Yeah, I, I think... Um, the most crucial issue right now um, as a student is the student debt crisis. Mm. It's not really talked about, um, but it's just surpassed over a trillion dollars, and they say that it's more than credit card debt and auto loan debt combined. Wow. Um, and so that's, that's one issue. Um, another well, thing it's is... It's pretty darn scary when you graduate from school, is. don't have a job, yet you have all that debt. Yeah, and yeah. A, a couple of economic, uh, economists just came out with a report that said 50% of recent graduates are unemployed. Um, and, you know, if you look at certain minority groups, um, mm -hmm. you know, youth yeah. unemployment is 16%. That's twice the national average. And so those are just a few issues that we can, we can, we feel that we can change at SAPAC. Um, we aren't naive and think we can change the world, but we think we can start with one person at a time. Well, that's good. That's the way to start it. So what else? What else is important? Uh, I, I think, you know, we obviously Social Security, but I also think about the national debt. Um, mm -hmm. This generation, again, baby boomers and, yes. and the greatest generation have uh, done us a great service. Um, but we also feel that there are some, some great tasks to, to still be fought. Um, and that's going to hit my generation. And so that, I think, uh, is a big f issue f with us. And we want to, we wanna, you know, start that conversation. Locally would be great, but getting the ball rolling and having that dialogue, again, without the partisan gridlock. Right. You know, when um, kids graduate from college and they don't have a job and it takes them a while to get going, a lot of times they end up in, in the low end, lower paying jobs. Um, you want to encourage people to go into a public office and to make a change that way, but I, it seems to me that the people that are able to go into public office so often are those that are financially comfortable. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you get people into public office if they're at that lower uh, income range? Because Really, it's, it's pretty difficult. You see it with the presidential campaign, obviously, but in a lot of other even local campaigns, it takes a lot of money to get somebody into office a lot. So you think it's worth the effort? I, I know it's worth the effort. And, you know, they say, I think 75% uh, of Congress went to 40 uh, elite schools, at least mm -hmm. 40 yeah. schools. And so there is that aspect, but I think it, it, it just takes, um, it takes one. It takes that group or that, uh, that dreamer or what have you uh, that believes that you can do it. And then everybody kind of falls in line and goes, okay, we can follow this this drumbeat. And that's what SAPEC's trying to be. It's trying to be kind of that um, uh, innovator, that, that, that person, that, the group that can say, you know, we can make that change. So to those people who, again, are underemployed or unemployed mm -hmm. after all that, um, 
it's a big issue. And I think that we're seeing some policies now coming out um, with uh, the pay ratio out of college. You know, mm -hmm. that you pay mm -hmm. back your student loans based on what you're paying. That's a great policy. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's innovative. Um, and I think that people from both sides of the aisle can get behind stuff like that. And that's really what we want to, we want to push. But there is that, um, that thing to overcome, that you know, glass ceiling to shatter. Um, and we know it's there, um, but we're not afraid of taking it on. I like that. So tell me, what kinds of things does Students for America's Future do? I mean, you, obviously you're trying to do these things, but in what, exactly. in what ways? So this, this last election cycle, we were able to um, kind of observe a lot of the things that were going on. We had just gotten started just recently, but um, there was a candidate who had just recently graduated um, from the University of Montana. Mm -hmm. um, young gal, great speaker, uh, and she ended up winning. And we were able to follow her campaign all the way through. Uh, uh -huh. She is going to be, I think, depending on what ends up happening, a ranking member in, in the House, in the Mon Mon Montana uh, Assembly. Um, and so kind of being a part of that campaign and a know-nothing, you know, mm -hmm. at least what society had said, and right, right. how can she know that she just graduated from college, and she, again, broke that glass ceiling, we can point to stories like that. Again, it's just a story, but seeing and things like that. Uh, another big thing is um, we were able to go back to Chicago where I attend school I meet with a couple of national organizations, nonprofits, political organizations, um, and they are very interested in working with us. They have names, they have some senators right now mm -hmm. and some House members who are working on their campaigns, um, but they're interested in what we have to say because of the fact that we don't come with political baggage on either side right, of the aisle. Right. And so just identifying that you are, again, not here to throw mud, but you're here to bring solutions and bring people together, I think resonates across the aisle. Um, but I think most importantly is, uh, I think people uh, like Jen in Montana or people in Chicago. I think that people want to be a part of something. And I don't think that politi you know, politics as a whole is as off-putting as it's been. Mm -hmm. And that's what I we want to change. Agree. Okay, so if somebody were interested in becoming uh, involved with uh, SAFPAC, what is involved in doing that? What do they need exactly. to do? Uh, so, of course, you can go to SAFPAC.org, which is S-A-F-P-A-C.org, and, and look at the membership aspects. Um, Two of the big 2013 um, initiatives we're doing is one with the college campuses. Right now we, we represent with FAMU, Florida a and University, um, with Wheaton College, Mountain Community College, a couple of colleges in the Northwest, uh, a little bit over 120,000 students on mm. campuses across the country. Um, again, not as active as, as we would like, but it's still but a start. But you're still new, it's you're, a, you're yeah. very new, so it, it's yeah, still you gotta start. start somewhere. So, so that's, that's one thing. Um, but it's just identifying what people have an interest in. I mean, not everybody wants to lobby. Not everybody wants to write their senator or talk to their senator. Some people just wanna you know, write stories or blog or, or detail certain local issues that are going on in their communities. Right. So just identifying a problem is the start and then communicating it with us is, is the, I think, the solution. So do you help, pe help people identify the problem or, uh, or just kind of uh, assist them in, in, to identify the problem and then show them ways to, to uh, you know, either blogging or, or writing their senator? I mean, do you provide yeah. ideas on, on how to become involved? Yeah, so, so again, specifically with 4 and they had a huge issue with voter registration mm -hmm. and some of the laws, and we all heard about that through right, the process. Right, right. So we were able to, to, to talk with some people down there about what are some laws and how can you do that? So they were able to talk to the local officials. It turned out in the election, the voting wasn't an issue, the registration wasn't an issue. Um, and so that was something that was identified, a problem, mm -hmm. communicated, and then solved through students nice. advocating, which again, is this bare minimum, but it's taking that extra step beyond identifying the problem to address the solutions. Now, since you're uh, pretty much all over the country, I mean, in, in very... Not me, but... But, you, but I mean, the SAFPAC is correct. in different locations all over the country. You don't have meetings, do you? Or, or how do we, you... We, we have, our, we have our, our board, so our, okay. our, our general board, which is made up of the executive staff who meets okay. and talks about you know, pertinent issues, candidates we would potentially want to endorse. Okay. Um, somebody's writing an op-ed right now about foreign aid, uh, national debt, things like that. But but not you know, specifically. So regional. somebody can become involved simply by becoming a member online. Correct. And being involved that way. Correct. So you don't need to take your time to go yeah. out to meetings. You can kind of do it and become involved as little or as, as yeah. much as you want. Is that right? I like to use my grandma. She's 92 years old. She sits at home. She reads the newspaper, does her crossword puzzle every day. Yeah. But she's just as engaged, doesn't have a computer or a smartphone. Right, right. But if she can be involved at 92 years old, anybody can be involved. Well, you know, and, and older generation, we, you know, we learned about um, politics, we learned about 
current issues by reading the newspaper, mm -hmm. um, by uh, watching the news on TV. Now there's a lot more ways for people to become engaged. Obviously, the computer and the internet has made the world much smaller, and people can learn a lot more. You, how do you encourage? Um, or what do you encourage students to do to find out more about current issues? I mean, do you steer them toward certain areas that are that you think are dependable uh, information? Yeah. Well, I think the first part is there's already built-in kind of machines. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to enable and encourage people right. and empower people that this is their future and they should care yes. either directly yes, or indirectly. Yes. Um, so we, one avenue we've used, you know, uh, is the student governments. That, that's the college mm. avenue. Another way is we're using the local, the local governments, the, the, the senators and the house members in the state governments. Um, and that was really productive here in the, in the last legislature in Oregon where it was split and mm -hmm. they had to work together right. one way or another. Right. Um, right. Which is not the you know, ideal situation, but hey, they did and they passed a lot of comprehensive things in education right. and things like that. So that's what I, what I would say about that. You know, I was reading something about um, how you think that everybody um, should be able to achieve the American dream. Is, is that right? What, what do you consider the American dream? What, what is that to you? Uh, wow. Well, um, what is it to you personally? You know, I, I think for me as an, as an African American and has there been a lot of opportunities given to me, mm -hmm. whether it be through, you know, financial aid or other things like that, I, I just think that um, SAPAC really preaches uh, we want to have equal opportunity, but not necessarily equal outcomes. Okay. Now, that, well, that what in the world bit. does yeah, that mean? Yeah, exactly. That to me. we, we know that there are some people that want to be police officers, people that want to be teachers, people that want to be, have an aspiration to be rich, or people that want to be a pro basketball player. But to not be given that opportunity, we feel is not fair, and it's not right, and it's not what we were founded on. Right. Um, but we don't want everybody to be a teacher, or everybody to be LeBron James, or everybody to be, uh, be no you fun. or I. Yeah. Um, and so we want to make sure that the opportunity that was afforded to you afforded to me or afforded to uh, you know, President Obama or George W. Bush or whomever it might be, is available for the next generation. And that's really what we're concerned about as we see these trillion dollar debts and these ongoing fights and this party and her party and the Tea Party and, and all these discussions that really don't get to the issues. Mm -hmm. uh, they just distract us from what really can be, um, we feel, solutions. So really the, the point is the American dream is about choices and opportunities exactly. and the ability to, to achieve what it is you personally exactly. want. So you talked about voting. Obviously, registering to vote is huge. It's, That's very important. Um, getting started possibly with your student government in your high school, uh, you know, if you're in high school and then in college, that's a good place to start if you want to become involved in making a change. I would think that would be a good, um, a good yeah, entry point, avenue, yeah. you know, for people. Um, what, what other things can kids do to become involved? Well, one, th one thing I just want to make sure that I communicate is it is politics, mm -hmm. but this is not political. Right. I understand that some people have turned off and go, I don't want to be involved whatsoever. But the, the most important thing what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, no matter how you slice it, this is going to affect your life in some avenue. Right, right. And it's better to be on the front end than in the back end. Um, but I think that there's a lot of ways to get involved. But I would say specifically, identifying that you have a story, again, writing an op-ed or writing a letter or, or empowering yourself, whatever that might be to that person. But we feel that SAPAC is a way to kind of you know, coalesce around an issue or issues and educate people about some important issues we feel are on the forefront of our, our nation. So again, SAFPAC is uh, www.safpac.org, S-A-F-P-A-C. Yes. Exactly. Okay, and people can go to that website, check it out, become involved if they want to, or just get more information. Exactly. We're almost out of time. Anything else you want to share with our viewers before, before I let you go, Larry? I just, again, thank you, Monica, for the opportunity. Metro East has always been hospitable to us and to me, and I Good. appreciate that chance. Well, I think you have a, a great future. You're, you're, you're on your way. You're doing great things. So uh, congratulations on uh, making a difference already, Larry. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. We'll be right back with the Jesuit uh, volunteers, and we're sure you don't want to miss that. So we'll be right back.